Hey friends. Today I want to talk about fun service projects and how we think about those in the empowerment department. And my hope is that this video will help you to find your own fun service projects and in that way to find and live your vow. Mary and I have been working together for about a year and a half, a bit more than a year and a half, and something like that. And over the course of our work together, one of the things that we've done is develop a model of fun service projects or quests as we call them. And what exactly the components of a fun service project are. And I'll link to a blog post that we've written about this in the description that has a really nice diagram that we've built about it. And it's what's called a radar chart or a, uh, I think it's sometimes called like a spider web chart or something like that, with five different qualities. And the idea is that any given project may not have all five of these qualities or it may have these qualities in different degrees, but these are kind of five different components or aspects of a service project that you want to be thinking about and intentionally building into your project, steering towards. And when we f help people find projects, we're kind of keeping these qualities in the back of our mind and making sure that the projects people choose have at least some aspect of each of these five. And sometimes we decide to emphasize one more than another with a given person or hero. And these five qualities, which I, I would really recommend memorizing if, if you're interested in this sort of thing, is fun, feasible, beneficial, ambitious, and then U-shaped. Fun, feasible, beneficial, ambitious, U-shaped. And I'll talk about them in that order. I think in the beginning, with your first early service projects, the qualities of fun and feasible are the most important. For starters, it's just got to be fun. A lot of what we all kind of need to go through is to reconnect to what's fun for us, what we enjoy, and realize that there's value in that, just even intrinsic value, even before it begins to help someone else or benefit them. Oh, I like doing this. And so many of us have had experiences of work that we don't enjoy, work that we feel obligated to do. Maybe we've done service projects that we thought would benefit other people, but we sacrificed ourselves in the process. And that's not fun, and that's not sustainable, it's not life-giving, it's not enlivening. And that's not actually the direction of your vow. What's fun is a trustworthy compass for your vow, for the way that you are going to manifest in your life and be of benefit to others. So really connecting with what's fun for you, what you enjoy doing, what you love, and reflecting on that and honoring that. And it may not be something that makes sense. It may not be something that you even feel you have permission to do or that others approve of. And just noticing, hey, I really like doing this. Like, I don't know, for me, I like electronic dance music and I like dancing, I like music. And, you know, when I was at, in doing monastic training, that's not something that obviously fits into monastic training. Or, you know, I got really interested in military strategy. And I was just like, oh, this is fun to read about. I love reading about this. And how that fit with monastic training was not obvious at the time. But just really trusting what's fun, what, what you enjoy doing, um, connecting with that. Maybe you like being outside or, you know, making music or joking or looking at memes or whatever it is that you find yourself doing that you enjoy doing, that you don't have to force yourself to do, that you love to do, that you look forward to doing, really reflecting on those things, connecting to them, knowing yourself in that way. Oh yeah, I love doing this. And, and importantly, fun is a feeling. It's actually a feeling. It's a, it's a somatic embodied quality. It's not an idea of fun. So sometimes people have trouble with this where they think something is fun, but it's not actually fun on a bodily level. And what you actually want to connect to is the felt sense of what's fun, what you enjoy doing, because that's non-coercive. You don't have to force yourself to do it. You love doing it. It's sustainable in that way because you could just keep doing it. You love doing it. And that's also going to end up being in unexpected and surprising and beautiful ways connected to your purpose and what you're here to do, how you can benefit others. 
So first off, you want to pick a project that's fun, that's enjoyable, that you'd like to do. And then it also has to be feasible. It has to be something that you can actually do, something you can practically accomplish, something that you know you can do, that you have confidence that you can do. Ideally, something small, something can be done in a day or a week or a month. That's about the time scale you want to pick. And it's not huge. It's simple. It's small. It's feasible. Based on the previous experiences you've had, you should know, oh yeah, I can do this. Like, I know I can write a blog post. I've written a million blog posts. Uh, not really, but a lot of blog posts, both on my current blog and former blogs. I've written a lot of essays. I've written books. For me, writing a blog post is a feasible service project, for example. I know I can do it. I've done it before. I have the skills that I need. And I can do it. I just have this embodied confidence. If right now an idea occurred to me for a specific blog post that I thought would be enjoyable to write, that would be beneficial for the world, I'd just be like, yeah, I can do that. No problem. And um, you want to have that confidence in yourself and the project. Like, yeah, this is doable. This is feasible. I have the skills. I have the prior experiences. I know how to do this. This is possible. And so those two qualities are the most important things starting out, that you want to do it, that it's enjoyable, that it's fun for you, and that it's feasible. Fun and feasible. That's really what we emphasize with heroes, with the people that we work with in the first quest that we do with them. Because you have to reconnect to what's fun. It has to be a fun service project and it has to be feasible. You have to actually finish the project. That's so important. So picking a short time scale, a, a project that has a scope that's reasonable. A lot of times there's a temptation to pick a really big scope to make it more complicated. You can always do that later, but just starting small and picking something you can actually do. So this might be like a blog post or, you know, recording a video like I'm doing now or, um, hosting an event that's like an hour or something on Zoom, or I don't know, writing a tweet thread, or I don't know, anything, making a drawing, depending on, it depends on you, of course, what your skills are, what's feasible for you, what will be easy for me might not be easy for you, what's easy for you might not be easy for me. Maybe the idea of writing a blog post terrifies you, but you have no problem, I don't know, uh, yeah, like carving a piece of wood. <laughs> I have a difficulty with physical skills and sometimes, and like, you know, I could learn to do things like woodworking, but if you just gave me something like that right now, I would find that difficult and overwhelming and intimidating. And so just knowing myself, oh, a blog post is going to be a lot easier, a lot more feasible, but maybe for you, woodworking is it or anything. So first off, picking a project that's fun and feasible. That's an important, those two are important qualities of a fun service project. But you also want to be attuned to service and benefit and having a sense that this will actually help people. There's some way that this will help people. And this really requires having an expansive, broad view of what being of benefit is. It's easy for the word service to have connotations of, you know, for me, I always think of this story where I went to volunteer at a, at a food pantry when I was in middle school. And it's like, that's a legible way that something is of benefit is feeding someone who's hungry, right? Making it possible for someone who's hungry, who's poor to have food that they might not otherwise have. That's a good thing. That's a benefit. And there's a lot of ways to benefit people, just an enormous number of ways to benefit people. Ones that are may not be as legible or as direct. So for example, an example I really like of this is making a piece of art. Making a piece of art can really touch someone's heart, whether it's a drawing or a piece of music or a story. Expressing yourself in some way is something that can really touch someone and change their life. I'm sure you've seen pieces of art or music or stories that have really touched you and inspired you or helped you heal something or understand something about yourself or the world. And a really good piece of expression can be of tremendous benefit, often in ways that are... Uh, hard to predict or unconscious or, but you just expressing yourself creates the conditions for that kind of benefit to arise. So maybe you just draw a beautiful picture and that's a benefit or you make a piece of music and you may not understand why, you may not have a clear account of how this is going to benefit the world, but just steering towards that. Often the ways that the things you do end up benefiting people will surprise you. But to the extent that you're aware, having some account for yourself of, oh yeah, this is how this is going to benefit people. This is how this is going to help the world and building that into your project. 
then you want to pick something that's ambitious, that's challenging for you, that's going to cause you to grow. Maybe you need to develop new skills to do this project. Maybe this is just a harder version of something you've done before. Maybe you need to work through some internal pattern or struggle that's hard for you in order to do this project. This is what makes a service project hard, is that it's going to require you to grow, and a really good service project will require you to grow a lot, but you don't want it to be too hard, and there's a skill to sort of scoping the difficulty challenge level appropriately. You want it to be challenging so that you grow and actually learn new things and benefit yourself from doing this project, but you don't want it to be too hard because it still has to be feasible. It still has to be something that you actually finish. If you don't finish the service project, if you don't give it to the world, it can't benefit people, at least directly. Maybe you learn something from it and that ends up helping you later on with a different service project. But ideally you finish the service project and actually give it to the world. You give your gift, as we like to say, and it, you know, you've taken the time to think of this gift and create it, and then you actually give it to the world. So it can't be too challenging, but you do want it to be ambitious. You do want it to cause you to grow. And for me, increasingly, this is something that really motivates me. I love picking projects that are challenging, that cause me to grow. That's what gets me excited about a project. Increasingly, that's what is fun for me, is knowing that I'm going to grow through working on a specific project, that I'm going to gain new skills, that I'm going to deepen in my capacity to do the things that I want to do in the world. That excites me. And there's a skill level to picking things that are hard, but not too hard. And of course, with your early service projects, it's fine to pick something easier. You, as, as I said, you want to focus on what's fun and feasible. And so the first project may not be too challenging. And it also may not be the most beneficial project you ever end up doing. It's okay. It can be small. It can be simple. That's fine. That's good, in fact, with early service projects. But eventually, you want to start considering these components of service and ambition more and more so that your projects are more and more beneficial and they're also more and more challenging for you. Ideally, you do it bigger and better every time where it's of more benefit and you're also growing more, but not too fast, not too hard. You don't want to burn out. You don't want to make it too challenging on yourself. The challenge should feel exciting. It should feel like a video game where it's fun to play and the difficulty level is just perfect for where you're at and you just want to keep playing because you're like, oh, this is great. I love this. And if it's too easy, that's not fun. But if it's too hard, that's also not fun. So you need some challenge for it to be fun and rewarding and also for you to grow. That's how you benefit through doing the service project is that you see yourself gaining new capacities and new skills. And that's a really rewarding process to look back on something like, yeah, I really grew through doing that. So those are the first four qualities, fun, feasible, beneficial, and ambitious. The last one is U-shaped. And this is, you can replace this with your name. Like for me, it would be a Tashin shape project. And, you know, if your name is George, then it would be a George shape project. Or if your name is Sally, it's a Sally shaped project. And this one's a little bit more mysterious and harder to find, but you'll know it when you find it. And it's almost as if a given project has your name on it. Like it just exists out there and it has your name on it. It's like, please do me. I want you to do this project. I don't want this other person to do this project. You do this project. And like you could choose a project that's fun and feasible, that's of benefit and ambitious, but isn't really your project at the end of the day. And you want this to have your name on it to be something that you are uniquely well suited to doing. So one example for me would be starting to do these meta dance parties. I do these meta dance parties for the love department, and that's just something that I really enjoy doing and that is well that I'm well suited for, that I can help people to do loving kindness meditation and then to dance to that and bring that into dance with electronic dance music. And my friends would say like, oh yeah, that's that's a Tashin shape project that has Tashin's name on it. And I would say that myself. It's yeah, it's fun and feasible and a benefit and ambitious, but it's also has my name on it. And you'll see this with most of the projects that I do. It's like, oh yeah, I don't, I'm not sure someone else could have done that or that they could have done it just the way that Tashin did it. Maybe someone could do something similar, but they would do it differently than the way he did it. And this is really 
connected to who you are and what you understand about yourself and requires some self-knowledge. It can help to have friends and mentors and colleagues who can reflect things about you, about what you're doing. That's what we try to do in the empowerment department of like, oh, you're, you're really good at this or you really enjoy this. And what if you built a project around that? And it takes time to learn yourself, learn about yourself in that way and to come to know yourself. This is something we're always doing as we grow and live our lives. But the more you understand yourself, the more you'll be able to choose projects that are you're well suited for, specifically well suited for, that have your name on them, that they're U-shaped. In my case, Tossin shaped. In your case, whatever your name is. And that's a word I would really recommend adding to your vocabulary is U-shaped or, you know, your name shaped, whatever your name is. George shaped, Sally shaped, Jim shaped, Tina shaped, whatever it is, that's a word you should add to your vocabulary. And you want to pick a project that's U-shaped. So as I said at the beginning, any given project may not have all five of these qualities or it may not have them to the same degree. Early on, you want to pick ones that are more fun and more feasible. Later on, you want to steer towards ones that are more of service and more of benefit. And also, ideally with every project, you learn more and more about this U-shaped quality, about who you are, what you're well suited to doing, and picking projects that have your name on them. And this is what we try to do in the empowerment department is to help people find projects that have all five of these qualities to cultivate the ability to pick these projects for themselves and do more and more of them. But even if you're not in the empowerment department, uh, which you can apply, we have an application page on our form, application form on our page. But, you know, there's only so many people we can support and probably a lot more people will be able to watch this video than we can directly support at this time at least. But you can choose a project that has these qualities and do it for yourself and do lots of projects that have these qualities. And ideally, the more projects you do, the more they have these qualities, the better you get at picking projects that have these qualities. And I really think you'll find if you do this more and more that you really enjoy your projects, that you grow through doing them and that they're of tremendous benefit to the world. And that's a process that I think leads to what we call living, finding your vow your life purpose, your vocation, your calling, which is just very rewarding. That's, that's the most rewarding thing is feeling like you're in alignment with who you are, what you came here to do, what your life is about, that you're in harmony with the whole world, really. And of course, you'll conceive of that in your own way and have your own way of making sense about that. It'll look different for you than it looks for me, but that's the good stuff. That's the good stuff. And I want that for you. I want that for everyone watching this video. And my practical advice for getting there is to choose a fun service project, choose one that has these five qualities, and then do more and more of those projects, as many as you can.